Welcome, here's an advanced tutorial on the TikTok edit style. Did you know I'm utterly insane? You will need the Sapphire plugin to add glow onto your text and also shake onto your clips. The BCC plugin is entirely optional and you can use it for glow on your text instead of using Sapphire's glow. But anyways, let's get started. Step 1. Preparing your sequence. The basics have already been covered through my other tutorial. This is an advanced version. Create a new sequence and change the resolution to 1080 by 1440 for a 3x4 aspect ratio, which looks like this. Or 1080 by 1920, which usually fits a phone screen and looks like this. I'm using 1080 by 1440. Most editors that use this style pick 60 frames per second over 24 and 30 for that smoothness on their edit. A very popular choice. However, 30 and 24 is absolutely fine and I do recommend it over 60 but 60 it is for this example click ok import your music onto the timeline cut and organize your clips from the source whether it's a scene pack or episode or film i'm going to rescale my clips to fit the frame and center it towards the character this is my result introduction with character dialogue did you know i'm utterly insane and then the main clips step two color grading we're going to go from this to this. Use my method as a guide since my settings will look different across your clips. TikTok edits are bright and high in contrast, so I'll set the exposure to 1.5 to brighten it up. Increase contrast to 75, maybe even 100. Lower the shadows a little. Increase the highlights a bit. You can change the saturation amount to a negative value for a monochrome look or positive value for more striking colors. I'm leaving it as it is. Temperature controls the difference between warm and cold depending on what emotions you are trying to convey, so do look into that too. Now we'll sharpen it up. So apply the sharpen effect and set it to 20. Then apply unsharp mask and set the radius to 200. The higher the value, the smoother it will look. Step 3. Time remapping. Also known as Twixter or Twixtering, although I will not be using Twixter, just the built-in time remapping feature. To begin, expand the layer your clips are on by clicking here, for me it's between V1 and V2 and drag it up like so. The higher, the easier it is to remap. Right click on your clip, head to speed slash duration, set the time interpolation to optical flow and click OK. Do this for the remaining clips but highlight them all first and then right click, time interpolation, optical flow. Saves time. Next, right click on this tiny FX button on your clip, then time remapping, select speed. This line should now appear. It controls the speed of your clip. Head one frame ahead from the start of your clip, hold control on your keyboard and the plus symbol will appear next to your cursor. Click once to set a keyframe. You can move your playhead out the way if it helps. Click the point on the right side and drag it right like so. I suggest keeping it near to the beginning, so here rather than there, since we're going to pull the speed bar down, but only the area past the second point, so this, not this. Click and pull it down to 20% or lower. You may need to increase or cut down the duration of your clip after doing this. Repeat this method. Play it back and it may be choppy, and this is because the time remapped clips have not been rendered. For some of you, the bar here might turn red instead, meaning rendering is required. Mine is green, but rendering is still required, so must be a visual bug. If you render a certain segment and make any changes after, it will be choppy and you'll need to render again to see the result. You have two options, either export the time remapped clips to reduce lag when we add on effects such as a shake, meaning you won't need to continuously render over and over, or leave it as it is. You can render it on your timeline so that you know how the time remap looks and if you're fine with it just continue with the edit. To export the clips, head to the beginning of the first one and hit I on your keyboard, then head to the end of the last clip and hit O, then export at a high quality. I've covered export settings already and it is crucial you understand what's best for your edit, so watch the guide as soon as possible. Then just re-import your clips onto the timeline. Step 3b, nest your clips. Some may skip this part so I separated it into its own section. You must nest your time remapped clips if they haven't been exported before applying any effects. Simply right click, nest, and name it if you want to. Click OK. This is to prevent the time remap from affecting other effects like shakes and flickers by slowing them down too. Step 3C glow. It's easier adding glow onto your clips after nesting them since we've time remapped them. So open up a nested sequence, I'll start with my first clip, and duplicate it by holding alt on your keyboard. Then add Gaussian blur. Don't change anything yet. Set the duplicated layer to linear dodge and turn the opacity down to 50%. Now turn up the Gaussian blur amount to whatever looks best. This spreads the glow and the opacity controls its visibility. For this example, 50 is fine on both. Then return to the main sequence. And by the way, this is entirely optional. Step 4. Text. 
So everything you just saw was entirely scripted, the voiceover was scripted, but from this point on I'm just going to go with the flow because this step is quite complicated. So here I've opened up my old sequence, so this is the edit that you saw at the beginning, and as you can see I've got some text layers placed over here, so I've got about 5 in total. What I've done here is I've synced the text to the character's dialogue, so here it says did, so that fades in, then it says you, so that also fades in, and so on. Just so you understand, what I first did was create a single text layer, so for example I made did, and then what I did was I applied all the effects so here I've got BCC Glow OBS and all of these and then I used it as a template for the remaining words so I simply just copy and pasted it over to the other layers and then of course repositioned it so that it's aligned with the other text so what I'm going to do is head over to my new sequence so this is the example that you've been seeing this is where the dialogue starts for me so what I'm going to do is create a text layer just here so I'm going to name it did and then just pick a font I usually use next to bold and then extend it to the end except I'm not let me show you why so if I head over to my other sequence you can see we've got all of these words and then the final word which is insane is by itself so all of these are going to stop at this point here just before the final word fades in so if I head back you can see I have cut it just there depending on how many words you are going to be using push your text layer up for me I need to do a few turns so did and then you know I'm so maybe a bit more did you know I'm utterly yeah there you go that's perfect I'm going to copy and paste all the effects and settings from my other sequence to save time so now that I've pasted it the first effect you want to apply is S shape Set the amplitude to 0.1, frequency to 2, head down to X shake, uh, random should be 20 and then 1, Y shake should be 96 and then 1 again, then add on wave warp, wave height should be 8, whip should be 1500, direction should be 0 and wave speed should be 0.5. One thing I do want to mention is that the order of your effects will play a huge role on how your text turns out looking. I think in the older versions when you add on an effect it applies it at the bottom but for me it adds it at the very top. Maybe it's only for text layers I'm not entirely sure but the order you should follow is a shake first, wave warp and then the rest. Ignore the Gaussian blur but anyways just duplicate your wave warp so the one that we just added and set the direction to 90 degrees. So you've got one with direction at 0 and then one at 90. Add on a drop shadow, make sure it's black, opacity to 50%, direction to 135, distance to 6 and softness to 8. And now it's time for the glow. So you can either use BCC Glow OBS if you have the BCC plugin or you can use Sapphire Glow. If I just hide BCC Glow OBS and add on S underscore glow and just add it on. I would recommend settings like let's say brightness at 1. Glow width could be anything below 50. Let me try 50 so it looks like this which is pretty good. Maybe even 25 to make it look a bit stronger like that. Or I could do 50 and then change up the brightness maybe 1.5. I don't know why but there's a tint of blue around the glow but I found out how to remove it so if you go to width blue and change it to 1.2 it kind of removes it. I don't know why it adds it on for some reason, but that's one way to fix it. But yeah, that's how S Glow looks like, and then BCC Glow OBS looks like this. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to be using S Glow instead. So I'll remove the BCC effect. Next, you need to align it, so scroll down to your text settings and just reposition it like so. I don't know why it keeps on glitching out for me. I know it's a Sapphire bug, and I'm pretty sure most of you have experienced this. Common editing problems, but it doesn't really matter. I think that looks fine just there, and then what I'm gonna do is duplicate it, and then just resync it, so did you? I I think it's around here. I'm just guessing because my audio tracks are on mute, but I'm just gonna scroll down, move it like here, and it's oh my god. I feel like it's gonna crash anytime soon, hopefully not. But anyways, I'm gonna change it to did you so you and just repeat this method, duplicate, reposition to sync it with your dialogue. For those who are using BCC Glow OBS, these are my settings, so just pause the video and copy them down if you want to. But once you are done, you'll get something like this. The reason why it looks so clear for me is because I've rendered my timeline already, so for you it should look like something like this. Low quality and a bit weird. So if I do stop, you can see it looks like this. This is what your end result would look like. But when you scrub through it, it looks like this, which is not the actual end result. And I forgot to mention, you can of course change the color of your text. I've chosen to go for red for the insane text. So just to go over it once again, make your text, realign it, add on your effects. So S shake, wave warp, wave warp duplicated, drop shadow, and then your glow. So that can be BCC glow or sapphire glow. It's up to you. Duplicate and then just reposition again. Step five transitions. Now before we do add on the transitions, what we need to do is add on some more S-Shake and Flicker. The S-Shake adds some handheld camera movement to your clip and then the S-Flicker obviously adds some Flicker. I've added both of these onto my first clip so as you can see S-Shake and these are my settings. So one for the amplitude, two for the frequency, X-Shake it should be 100, 0.8, Y-Shake should be 20 and then 1 and for S-Flicker it should be 0.2 
and then I think 15 for the Rand Amp. If you want a stronger flicker, you can change it to 0.5 instead, which looks something like this. So you can see it's much stronger than before. And just to let you know, the frequency controls the speed. So if I set it to 30, the flicker is going to be very strong and I wouldn't recommend this because, well, you can see, quite epileptic. Then simply just close these effects by clicking on the arrow next to it. Highlights both of these by holding control on your keyboard, right click, copy, and now it's time to add the actual transitions on. So this will be the Twitch shakes. For some reason, Sapphire is bugging again and I've got this weird line across my screen, but if it works, it works. And this time the order has been reversed. So I do think it's only like a text thing where you add on an effect and it places it at the top. For normal clips, it places it at the bottom, but this is what I've done. So I've added on S shake first, 0.6 for the amplitude and 6.5 for the frequency. Keyframe the amplitude at the beginning. Make sure to hit the stopwatch. Scroll down for X shake, 60, one, Y shake, 45, and then one. Head to the end, just one keyframe back. So not to the end one keyframe back like so and set the amplitude to one then right click on your first keyframe and click on ease out it's then going to create this curve like so so that's the camera shake done now we need to add the actual twitch so add on a shake once again head to the start and set the amplitude to one head about five 10 keyframes ahead and set it to zero. Right click on the last one and ease in, or you can manually graph this, so just open it up and then just move the handle to the left. The same applies to the frequency, so at the beginning it should be eight, then 10 keyframes ahead, 0.5, and then graph it so you can right click, ease in, or open it up, then move the handle slightly to the left. Now do not forget to turn on motion blur. Make sure this tick is visible. Then scroll down to X shake and set the random to 1200, then it should go four, 25, one, and then 0 0.7. For the Y shake, it should go 0, 0, 800, 4, and then 0. To make it easier, you can rename it by right clicking and then rename. I've named it Twitch. Then add on S Player. I've noticed a lot of TikTok edits tend to use this, and I think it's to hide all the mirroring, which works pretty well. So my settings for this are blur amount 50 at the beginning, I think 10 keyframes ahead, yep, and then set it to 0. I think I then. I don't really know why it curves like that. I think that's the wrong setting. Wait, what? I don't know what just happened, but the graph suddenly changed shape. Anyways, right click and then ease in. So S shake and S shake, which is the twitch, and then S underscore blur. Next, just add on a scale. So keyframe it at 100 at the beginning, head to the end, one keyframe back, and set it to 110. Open up your graph and make sure it looks like this. Just pull your handle all the way to the right. I've already covered this like a million times. So if you don't understand graphing, check out my other tutorial. Simply just pull this handle all the way to the right. So if I just show you this is how it should look normally like that so just head to the beginning make sure you pay attention to this where it says velocity put it all the way and then down make sure it's not below zero so 1.0 is actually fine if i can get to yep there you go perfect zero and then for the second keyframe you can pull this handle up and just tighten it like so that looks perfect but i'm going to stick to my other one which look like this now all you need to do is simply just copy and paste all of these effects onto your other clips let's start with the scale so right click on motion copy and i don't think you can highlight all of them and then just paste i've already tried it it didn't work for me but it might work for you hopefully but what i do is just head to the start and then Control v and then it'll paste it head to the start Control v if that doesn't work just head to the start right click paste and just do it for the remaining clips as for the effects just highlight them all by holding Control, right click copy and then i think you can highlight them all and then it should hopefully work if you just press Control v if it doesn't then once again head to the start right click paste and just repeat that if you would like this project file to make things a bit easier you can head over to my ko-fi page and buy this for only 1.99 but if you use code 20 you can get 20 percent off until the 31st of december this year with the project file you'll have access to what's on screen without the clips i've also opened up memberships on ko-fi so if you are interested and would like early access to these tutorials or let's say project files or even presets or anything then head over to my ko-fi and select a tier of your choice thank you for watching and i'll see you next time peace